Okay. Hi everyone. Today, uh, Daniel Mashiluk is with us. He's gonna talk about tips to improve your DAX. Uh, Daniel, thanks a lot for joining us today. It's our pleasure to have you with us. I'll cut the introduction very short and hand it over to you very quickly. Uh, thanks a lot again. We are listening to you. Uh, hi, Khalil. Hi, everyone. Uh, Khalil, thanks uh, very much for inviting me. Um, to be honest, when you, yeah, to, to be honest, when I invited uh, when you invited me, I uh, had a look at your uh, list of uh, sessions and uh, meetup sessions, and I saw names like Matt Addington, Alberto Ferrari, Mark Russo, and I thought, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I was so fortunate that, that they have accepted my offer and uh, I'm happy uh, <laughs> again. Uh, people, I'm sure, uh, know you very well because of your blog site, uh, your exam preparation book, and I'm, uh, I'm sure people know that uh, you, you are very good at docs. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Appreciate the kind words. Thanks. Okay, so uh, maybe. Uh, Mm. Yeah, we can uh, start now. Uh, so this session is uh, going to be very demo heavy. I will have very few slides with very little uh, content, just some content still, which I will share with uh, Khalil um, after uh, the session so he can upload it and uh, everyone can download it uh, if they wish. And uh, we will have six demos. Mm. You might notice it if you look at my task part. There are six demos that I opened. And uh, the format uh, is going to be like, um, first I do the demo and then we'll try to formulate a tip uh, that you can use in practice. Uh, so six uh, session, uh, six uh, demos in total. Okay, so um, yeah, this is a slide uh, about me. Uh, yeah, I'm a Microsoft MVP. I wrote uh, the exam preparation book. I am also the technical editor of um, a few books, um, most notably the um, books by Italians, The Definitive Guide to DAX, DAX Patterns. Um, sometimes I write to my blog, try to write at least once a month. And also I have uh, Twitter, where I usually post uh, things related to Power BI, like uh, new features in Power BI. And um, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, um, it's strictly professional. You will never see me post a picture of my cat because I don't have a cat. And uh, by, uh, the yeah, way, Daniel, by the way, Daniel, I I'm following you on Twitter. Do you have an insider in Microsoft? You are sharing, <laughs> you're sharing very interesting new features <laughs> regarding Power BI. No one else uh, knows. Yeah. Uh, you know, several people ask me this. Uh, I would say many people ask me. And uh, yes, usually people think that either I'm an MVP, although I became an MVP like three weeks ago, or I have some insider knowledge of Microsoft. And uh, that's not the case. Uh, actually, a, a few people even from Microsoft uh, have uh, uh, sent me some private messages. Sometimes they demanded that I delete my tweets uh, because they are a secret or something. And um, I only post publicly available information. Like if it's available in Power BI service, then I will post about it and then everybody can see it. And uh, you might be wondering, how do I find about it? Well, I am not sure how it is in uh, Turkey, uh, but in um, Russia on boxes of cereal, you know, the breakfast cereal, uh, sometimes you have uh, things like uh, find 10 differences those you know little games you, you compare the pictures and you find 10 differences so as a kid i was pretty good at that and uh, i remember many like most of the features of power bi and uh, whenever something new pops up i usually am able to find like usually i can tell if a feature is new and if it's new then i'll just post about it so, yeah. thanks a lot for sharing them yeah uh, i'm glad that people enjoy it um, by the way, uh, I have a co-presenter, co-host, my uh, my two-year-old son. Um, he he should go to that uh, uh, very soon. So apologies about that. Um, That's okay. That's fine. Yeah. So okay, let's go. Oh, just quickly. Uh, yeah, I also have um, 
provided uh, an idea for a quick measure in Power BI, this uh, correlation coefficient. So if uh, somehow uh, you need to remember my name and you forgot it, then you can go to Power BI Desktop, open quick measure, correlation coefficient, and then you have my name, so you can find me or something if you want to get in touch or something. Yeah. Okay. So uh, session format. Like I said, it's going to be first a demo, and then um, we'll be formulating a tip. Uh, sometimes I will, be, I will be asking questions, and because uh, this is not a uh, presentation uh, in the room, it's just a webinar, uh, I usually ask questions uh, that uh, I hope the audience will answer. So in this case, uh, Khalil uh, was very nice to agree. Uh, to, <laughs> yeah, to answer some of my questions. Yes. And uh, this is a uh, very technical session, I should say. Uh, but it's not like uh, it's at the same level as you know the, the Italians. Uh, so uh, nothing to you know explode your head with or something like that. So let's start with the first demo. I have got uh, yeah, this placeholder slide. So I've got a PBX file uh, here. So here's the question. I will show you the amount measure, and here it is. And the first question is, what is it doing? Do you notice anything uh, special here? I've just enlarged the formula bar. Khalil, any that, idea? That, that, that's a head of a formula, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, it uh, sounds this is full amount column in sales table uh, after filtering sales table according to some filter conditions. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, this is correct. And this is the answer that I expected. Uh, so the takeaway is it's, it's difficult to read, right? Let's format this because it's just two lines of code. Actually, no, I should say, I, I should have made a, a note. So all the demos are based on real life code, formulas that I saw written by other people. And uh, I just uh, took notes and uh, recreated them. I anonymized the code, I recreated them uh, for the demos, but they are real. All the formulas have been written by some people. So in real life, actually, this formula was a single line. I've uh, broken it into two lines and I made it a bit easier to read, but still, <laughs> it's still difficult to read. So let's copy this. And we've got a tool called DAX Formatter. Um, I'm sure, Khalil, you use it all the time. It's a very popular tool. Yes, it's a lifesaver. Yes, exactly. Formats. Yes, so let's format it. You just go to this website, paste the formula and format. Yeah, so it's um, quite a large formula. Now, you see, it's it's much nicer now, right? Now, I should say, make no mistake, this formula is still bad. It's just easier to read. Now, why is it bad? And again, this comes from the real life. It's bad because if you pay close attention you will see that actually it's going to be um, these these two parts they sum up to like the same value right and um, this contains works um, in such a way that it, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, full or discounted um, so let's leave out the technical details uh, the takeaway is because it's so B badly formatted, it was difficult to spot an error. And in real life, this formula did not return the correct results. Now, how would I write it? I would write it in a different way. I will show you. If we go back to the demo, here's what I would write. This. So this is what the formula was supposed to return. See, if we go back to the previous formula, you would see we're always doing sum of full amount here and here. But actually, for the second part, when it's discounted, we were supposed to do sum of discounted amount. I realize it's out of context. Yes, I'm just saying 
the key takeaway of this demo is that when something is difficult to read, mistakes are difficult to spot. With formula like this, you see it's very easy to read. When it's full, you sum full amount. When it's discounted, you sum discounted amount. That's it, right? Much easier to read when it's short and it's formatted. So that's the takeaway. Now, something I would like to note, um, if you want to save time from using DAX formatter for, say, short uh, formulas, you can use the keyboard shortcuts. So let's say uh, you have um, a formula like this, like just single line. Um, let's just artificially make a single line. Can you format it yourself? Absolutely. So let's say you want to do a line break. So you can press shift enter and it goes to the next line. And by the way, notice how it's intelligent enough to um, do an indentation. If you want to do more indents, um, you can, of course, add space, yes, but you can also press tab. If you want to decrease indentation, you can press shift tab. And um, yeah, uh, it again. Now, uh, something else you can do, you can uh, say comment something. Uh, so for example, I would like to comment, look, I'm just making it up, just these two lines. Uh, press Alt Shift A, and it's now a comment. And if you do it again, it's not comment again. Um, so yeah, uh, there, are, there are more shortcuts. Actually, I have a blog post about it with um, uh, GIF images, so you will see it in action and um, yeah uh, oh, something I forgot to mention is if you use DAX Studio or tabular editor then DAX formatter is um, uh, built in so you can call DAX formatter from those tools as well but if you don't want to use that then uh, you can use a formal formula bar keyboard shortcuts and I have a blog post on it here okay so this is the first demo you should format your code. Second demo. Here are a few questions. Now let me open the measure. Okay. Uh, just a second. Um, can you please help me with this? What is happening here? If something is blank, sales system value is blank, then uh, oh, it's it's adding up four or five different values mm -hmm. depending on the uh, depending on the blank condition. If yeah. it's a blank, then calculate this one, add them up at the end. Uh, yeah. Uh, so actually, it's uh, four different calculates. So mm -hmm. each is separate and uh, you see if this measure sales system one is blank then return zero otherwise return this measure and it repeats uh, four times so for sales system two three and four and there are a few problems with this now the first problem is that potentially this sales system one measure is evaluated twice it's possible and uh, you see the, the better way to address this is to just um, add a zero so basically instead of a blank somebody wants to return zero that's the whole purpose of this if statement now do you see any other problems in this measure and uh, let, let me remind you it's a measure not a column What kind of problem can we have? Uh, you are referencing the same measures in all four lines. You are using no, if no. Mm -hmm. they are different uh, measures. So it's sales system one, one, two, two, three, three, Set, four, same four. Same measure for each line. Yes, but then what is calculate doing here? What is the purpose of calculate here? Well, since it's a measure. It, it, it doesn't have to do anything with the 
result, I guess. There is no exactly. condition. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yes, the calculate is not doing anything at all. And this is something that I see from time to time. I see calculate in the measure by itself without any filter conditions. Why is it used? Like every time I see it, I ask the person next to me, somebody who gave me this file, like what is it doing? Who wrote it? And usually the response is, mm, I don't know, it was someone else, not me. And so I, I never get the answer. I never done, I never know why we have this calculate. Okay, well, maybe one day I will find out the answer, but just not today. So how would I write it? I would write it like this. See, if you must have a zero instead of a blank, just add a zero. There is no need to do the if statement. And like I said, calculate was extraneous. So this is much better. Um, De definitely adding zero at the end will solve the problem with the if. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, now each measure is evaluated only once because uh, we reference it exactly once and not twice like uh, in these if statements. Okay, so that's uh, one part. Now. Let me open another measure. Mm, just a moment. Yeah, this. Okay, uh, let me just out a bit. Okay. <laughs> so, so small. is it still small? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, okay, maybe let me, let me do this. I will just remove a few lines. Mm, like. Is it better? So what would you say this measure is doing? Looks like the first variable finding the date for current day. Mm -hmm. And then we are returning very long formula, mm -hmm. which calculates amp ops value according to some filter. You are removing all the filters from opportunity campaigns on the created date column mm -hmm. and testing dates in that table according to variable. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. <laughs> uh, so you see we're doing, we're removing filter from one column, like you said, yes. Mm -hmm. And then the condition, if we just translate it into plain English, the condition is that the date is greater than, you know, last uh, date, which is today's date. Mm -hmm. um, minus 10,000, which is like 27 years ago, oh, roughly. Yeah. yeah, and uh, less than or equal to last date, minus zero. So my questions here would be, what is this minus zero doing? That's my first question. Second, what is this? Like, why do we need it to be that difficult? And let me remind you, I did not make it up. It's a real formula written by a real person. I actually remember who wrote it. <laughs> now, isn't it this? Yes, that's exactly isn't it. <laughs> like, why do you use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven function calls instead of one, right? Now, I kind of understand this last date minus 10,000, but then I'm sure it's arbitrary. It's not like you want running 10,000 days. <laughs> and so this is kind of unnecessary, but then what is what is this? Date from year, month, day, it, it, it's quite similar to this variable last DT. So if it's a date, what what you're doing in this formula basically is you're breaking it into components 
year, month, and day, and then you put it back into a date. Why? Like, I have no idea. I decided not to ask at that time when I saw this. <laughs> so wh what would I do? Here's what I would do. Just a moment. Isn't this better? Guess, well, 10,000, I'm sure it's, you know, just meant to be running total across all time. Like if you must have um, last 10,000 days, okay, fine, we'll add one more condition here, today minus 10,000, fine, but this is all you need. And it returns the exact same value. So simpler is better. Now, what am I trying to say with this demo? Simple is good. Now, to write simpler code, it pays to know, to know the basic constructs and um, to know the, mo the main functions in DAX, right? So if I go back to uh, the slides, so I, I would like to say that DAX is a language by itself. It's, uh, yes, it, it has some similarities with Excel, and sometimes some people think it's similar to SQL or even MDX. No, it's a language by itself. And so if you spend some time on learning the theory, then you will get benefits from it. Now, the reason why the first bullet point here is DAX is not SQL is that uh, see in the first demo, sorry, uh, in the first uh, measure that I was showing here, this. If you have a SQL background, you would recognize it, this kind of pattern, because in SQL, null plus a number, say null plus one is null, but in DAX, blank plus one is one, right? So you don't have to check whether something is blank. It's safe to add a blank and a number. So you don't have to write these SQL constructs that this person I'm sure has from the past experience uh, because index is just not necessary. And then you see with, with DAX, the thing is actually not with DAX, but with um, uh, programming languages and many things in general, people like to learn from examples. And let's say you have some graduate who comes to your company and he looks at your code and he learns from you. If you write things like this, then unnecessarily complex code, it perpetuates into the future and ultimately your code, your formulas, your reports are more difficult than they need, be, than they need to be and they're more difficult to maintain. And in the end, you spend more time and money on the things where you could save money, right? So the main takeaway is learn a bit of theory, um, maybe a, the course by the Italians, the free one, introduction to DAX is great. It's just three hours and it's free. I think it's great as a starting point. If you have not yet taken it, by all means, you should. And uh, just have a look at the uh, DAX functions. There are not that many of them, uh, certainly much fewer than compared to Power Query. So just have a look at what the um, functions that are available. Okay. Yeah, one, so of the, one, one of the reasons that people are writing too long formulas to calculate something, uh, it, I think one of the reasons is not knowing enough about the available functions in DAX. If you yes. don't have a knowledge regarding uh, be beginning of month, then uh, you find yourself writing too long formula to just to calculate something for the beginning yes. of each month. But there's yes. a function for that. <laughs> I agree. And again, uh, and again, looking at examples is definitely one of the ways to learn DAX. That's that's true, but it works up to some point. Yes. When yes. you reach because that point, then you should go back to theory and read it again, 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 and think about it. Yes, I agree with you absolutely. And uh, another problem with DAX is you might see a formula that somebody wrote and you think it's going to work on your model, but just because you have some small differences, let's say you have a bidirectional filter in a relationship or something else 
then the formula does not re return the expected result. And then again, you need to learn some theory. So yeah, okay, uh, let's go to the next demo. So let's have a look at these measures. I will again enlarge this. So it's not formatted. That's the first problem. Now, the next uh, part that I would like you to pay attention to is I'm going to switch between measures and just see what the difference is. As you can see, the only bit that changes is this. Now, the problem is that there is a lot of repetition. If I need to make a change to one of these measures, I will need to change all six measures. And again, that's time. Now, let's format it and see if there are any other problems. Okay, so Khalil, is it large enough to read? Uh, not too bad. You are dividing two values after yes. calculates. You are using SOMEX inside calculates, filtering contracts tables according to what is it? According to column, feature X by CY. Yes. And removing filter from the status column. <laughs> it's a hell of a formula. And again, another condition comparing month of date according to max value in the filter context. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So there are a few things to note here. Now, Khalil, do you see lines 8 and 13? And do you see any difference between them? No, it's all, it's same, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yes, exactly right. It's the same. Now, question. Filter all contract status 1. What is it doing? So, OK, oh. we, we have you, all. You have only one. So. A uh, filter goes through this table, and then for each row, it, it checks where this condition is equal to true. So one is uh -huh. true, and so it will be true for every single row of this table, right? Oh, one stands for being true? I didn't know that. Yes, yes, uh, because I it can be... Uh, true. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, because uh, in uh, DAX, often uh, you can do implicit conversions. So one bit will be in implicitly converted to true. Actually, if we had any number uh, other than zero, say two or five, it would also be true. So anyway, what I want to say is first, this filter is unnecessary. You could just do all contract status. And second, if it's the same, then you just do another calculate outside of all this and write it once. So that's what I would do. Now, another problem that I see here is that just by reading the code, I can't tell whether something is a measure or a column. And sometimes it's quite important. So for example, you see here in the second calculate, we have contracts, contract amount. Now, if you have some tax experience, you know that this must be a measure because calculate only accepts um, measure references as the first parameter, so it cannot be a column. And so it's just uh, something that violates the best practice of um, referencing uh, measures without table names. So it's already confusing. And because of this, I don't know whether this is a column or a measure. And you see, this is bad because in some X, it's actually possible to use either a column or a measure. And the problem is that some x is an iterator, and if you do, if you 
reference a measure in an iterator, you trigger context transition, which is expensive. And that means it's going to be slow. So when you read a formula, you want to know uh, right away whether something is a column or a measure. So again, um, we'll get to this uh, best practice uh, later. Just for the time being, I want to say it's difficult to read. Uh, so if you reference a column, use a table name, but for a measure, don't use a table name. But there is another problem, line nine. Halil, do you see any problem here? Actually, what is it doing and why is it problematic? Well, comparing the uh, amount of dates in the printed context with mm -hmm. the maximum a uh, month of maximum date in the same filter context. And checking yes. them. Ah, it, it's a long line. Checking them uh, whether they're equal or not. Yeah, so it's kind of like a custom written month yeah, def to date. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, so why is it a problem? Now, you live in London, and mm -hmm. um, what is the end of the fiscal year? 31st of December. So so you're lucky. You will not have a problem that I'm going to describe. I live in Australia and the fiscal year ends on the 30th of June. Now, let's imagine we have two months selected. I'm oh, sorry, two, two years selected. So in these two years, the month of maximum date will return what? Probably probably 12, mm -hmm. right? They're comparing the same value. Ah, strange. <laughs> strange well, um, yes, it is strange code. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is, see, month of max date will return 12. And it will not be month to date anymore. Like it will not return the last month of the fiscal year, for example. Um, because you see it's going to be 12 and not 6. 6 is our last month of the year. So you see it's unnecessarily complex and because of this it introduces a potential for mistake. When you select more than one year you may have unexpected results. So it would be much much better to write month to date here. So just one function call and much, much simpler and correct. So let's go back to the demo. So how would how would I write it? Let me show you. So um, I have created these five measures. Um, just for convenience, I numbered them just so we can follow them. Um, but it, it's not strictly speaking necessary, of course, to create measures like this. I just recreated it uh, just so that it's easy to check. So we go from, from this measure, I will show you, uh, to what I have. So like I said, we have this dates month to date, which um, corresponds to this. And we have this all, um, which uh, corresponds to, oh, actually no, it doesn't correspond to anything. I will explain why I need it. And then we've got this expiry. It, it's not necessary to follow what these measures are doing one by one. What I'm trying to show you is if you um, break your formula into smaller bits, they are easier to maintain because you see, I have these measures one to, to four and then the last result is this. And so it's much, much simpler than this measure, right? And if you just change this plus one into say plus two, plus three, just like we have here, then you see, this is much easier to maintain. If you need to make a change, then you make your change in one of the first four measures. And then this measure, number five, and uh, 
num the measures like this, uh, they will automatically be fixed. So you should reuse measures as much as possible. Like if you have a complex formula and it repeats many times, just split it into measures and reuse them. So that's the uh, main takeaway from uh, this demo. Um, yeah, in programming, um, there is this principle called dry, don't repeat yourself. So even if your write DAX still applies, so you want to repeat as little as possible. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay. Can you improve this measure in any way? If uh, the summation of quantity times unit price is not equal to zero to context, I say again about getting blank or something. Yeah, it's actually the opposite of what we saw previously. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this case, if it's zero, then we don't want to show it. Mm -hmm. If it's zero, let it be blank. So how would you improve it? Now, here, you see, we have the same code repeated, so, yeah. right? So what do we do? The first option, if we take into account what I said earlier, is to create a measure and to uh, use this measure. So it would be if this measure is not zero, then uh, display this measure. Now there is a better way and it's better because this measure might be evaluated more than once. So your code may be a bit less efficient than it could be. So uh, the way I would do it is I would do say var sales amount equals Uh, by the way, there's a cutout in your voice sometimes. Um, okay. Um, let me check. Can can you hear me well now? That, that that's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully it stays this way. Okay, so this is much better because you see we save the result of this uh, calculation into a variable and then just check if it's not equal to zero, then return it. And because you save uh, variable results uh, and then call them, you don't evaluate the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. You see you, you use a variable, it's quite efficient. So this is uh, what I would do here. Now, let's see this one. Is it possible to improve this measure in any way? It's a bit of a tricky question. Mm. But yeah, any idea? Well, maybe we can assign the values to variables again. Uh, yeah. So remove all the filters from, from the quantity column, then compare this quantity column with the quantity value measure. Uh, yeah, uh, let me just show you what it's doing. Yeah, so it's doing something, right? Now, why can't we write this? Because in the end, we remove filters from one column. Can we? Is it possible? Th no, it's not. It, it, no. Uh, yeah, because uh, for measures, you can't do it. Uh, but yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yes, you're to variable. <laughs> then, then you can. Once, yes. That's a good trick. Definitely. So again, it works. Great. Okay. 
Now, here's a question. So if I put this measure here into this multi-row card, what do you expect to see? Let me maybe enlarge it a bit. So we have selected quantity as before. We have sales amount and then we do calculate. What do you expect to see? An, an error? Uh, no, there is not going to be an error, but um, certainly it's going to be interesting. So let's see. Just a moment. Hmm. Interesting. What's going on? It's not changing. Why? Well, here's the thing. Actually, just a few days ago, I think, <laughs> Mark Russo uh, put out a video um, on variables. And if you saw it, you would know that variables are actually constants. So you evaluate them, you save the result, and then no matter what you do with them, the result stays the same. And so see we have sales amount here as a variable. Then we try to do calculate over it and apply some filter. The filter is OK. It, it would work. If it were a measure, it would work as we saw before. It would. But this is a variable and it's actually constant. Uh, and so no matter what filter you apply to it, it stays the same. It's actually the same as if we had, say, this some number. Like it doesn't matter what filter you apply because this number stays the same. So with the variables, this is the only thing that pretty much the only thing you should be careful with um, because variables are constants. Otherwise, they can be of great help because they make your code easier to read. They are efficient. So you should use them uh, quite often as much as you can. So yeah, let's go back to the slides and uh, yeah, the tip is uh, yeah, you should use variables. Also, um, you can use variables with uh, meaningful names to document the code um, because you don't always produce uh, documentation, right? At least try to write formulas that are self-documenting, like somebody should look at your code and just immediately understand or more or less immediately what it is doing. Um, yeah, let's go to the next demo. OK, question. Is it always safe to filter a table? And let me show you what I mean. So we have three measures here. Actually, I have got another measure. And uh, Khalil, I need your help again. I would like to ask you um, what you expect this measure to return. Uh, just a moment, let me enlarge it. So just a moment, let me show you these three measures. So sales amount is just, just a simple sum X, okay, so nothing special. Then we have all the color sales where we calculate sales amount, but we remove filter on color. And we have filter, uh, sorry, we have color here on rows of this table. Okay, so pretty straightforward as well, right? So see for every row, we have a value that is the same as uh, the grand total of sales amount, right? So nothing special. And then we have single sales. For single sales, the filter is, um, we filter sales where quantity is one. So we filter a table. And uh, yeah, in this case, it's uh, it's okay. So we take sales amount and we only consider those sales where the quantity was exactly one. So it's a bit less, which is expected. 
Now I have measure number four, all color single sales. And the filter is the same as in single sales. So we filter the table and quantity is one, except um, we apply it to all color sales. So when I add this measure to the table visual, what do you expect to see? Now, let's see what will happen. All yeah. sales were uh, uh, is uh, was was calculating the uh, sales amount for all colors, right? Yeah, yeah. So for every row, we have the same value as in grand total of sales amount. So uh, maybe I would expect um, something like this value. 2 million uh, repeated for every row of the table. So it's like all color sales, except it should be a bit less because there is a filter mm -hmm. uh, where quantity is one. That's what I would expect. So let's put it. But we have the same results as single sales. Why? And the, the explanation is a bit complex. That's because um, there are expanded tables involved. So when you filter a table like sales, it's always an expanded table. And so it includes all the related tables like product in this case. And product includes the filters on colors from these rows, right? So even though all color sales, it ignores some filters, we set them back when we filter by sales, which might be a bit counterintuitive, but that's what it is. Now, how do we fix it? This is the important question. And the fix is simple. We don't filter a table. We filter a column like this. Now, this is what I would expect. Right? So this is the same value for every row, and it's a bit less than all color sales because there's a filter in quantity. So the key takeaway is that you should always filter a column, not a table. Well, maybe in some cases, yes, it makes sense to filter a table, but try not to do that. Okay. All right, final demo. So, uh, Khalil, I need your help once again. What do you see in the list of fields? In the list of fields? Yes, so here, what do you see? Can you please read this? View fact transactional detail, detail as a measure, and we have a table called product. What else do we have? Yeah, yeah, so uh, we have a table where only measures are visible. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. Now, when I look at it, um, I see something slightly different. Mm -hmm. So what I see is, um, hi, I have uh, a severe case of space of phobia. I am afraid and of na spaces. Na naming convention is very bad for that example. Yes, <laughs> yes, so mm -hmm. that's exactly right. So there is no problem with spaces and you should as much as possible make the names as user friendly as possible uh, because especially in large organizations the roles of um, a data modeler and the report builder they may be uh, divided and so you might build the data set and somebody else will build reports and yet someone else will view those reports right uh, actually, uh, with the recent feature, uh, which is uh, personalization of uh, visuals, it's even more important because imagine uh, you have end users who try to personalize a visual and then they see tables and columns called like this VW fact transaction detail. Obviously, this name comes from some SQL database. 
where the DBA uh, followed uh, their own naming conventions, which probably makes sense in the world of uh, maybe transactional databases may, or maybe data warehousing. Um, th that's okay. It's just that Power BI is different. There is no problem with spaces and the naming conventions should be as close to normal English as possible. So that's one thing. Now, something I mentioned before, what's the difference between columns and measures? So here, no, actually that's not, not the one, here. So here, you see we have amount and it's purple and it doesn't have a table name in front of it. Um, and so we know that for each row of product, we're evaluating um, this measure, right? And then we just take the average of it, right? Now, what if I introduce a column called amount? To the product table. Now, when I press enter, what do I expect to see for this card? Well, it's going to be 500. And actually, if we go back to average amount, we see that the amount now is black. <laughs> and it's now confusing, right? If you can, you should avoid having measures that have the same names as columns because you may run into issues like this. Like best practice is to reference measures without table names and columns with table names. And the reason is uh, simple. Uh, you cannot have two measures of the same name in different tables, but it is possible to have two columns with the same name in different tables. And so uh, the table uh, should be included with a column just so that you're sure where it comes from. For measure, it's not a problem, but when you have measures and columns that have the same names, sometimes you may find things that are confusing, like in this case. So that's, what's the key takeaway? That's the big risky thing in writing docs. And number yeah. one rule should be o o always before writing any docs formula, please use table name with column name if you are referencing, referencing a column. Yes. And only the name for a measure, your yes. table name. That's right. But, exactly. but this is not very clear while uh, l learning docs. It's not clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes um, I guess uh, it it's okay to just follow best practices, but then later you find out why those best practices exist in the first place. But yeah, I agree. It's not clear and uh, it took me a while to understand all this. Like it took me a while to learn that, I'll be honest. Okay, so the key takeaway. Um, yes, like Halil said, a column reference, use a table name, measure reference, no table name. Uh, you should use uh, user friendly names everywhere. Measures, columns, tables, they're the best and uh, absolutely no problem with spaces. Um, so yeah, that that would be uh, it from me. Uh, I'd like to thanks uh, to thank everyone for watching and uh, thanks Halil to uh, for inviting me and for uh, being a co presenter. I would say I appreciate your being active. <laughs> that uh, really helps. I said that it was a challenging task for me. It's it's quite uh, ch challenging to to debug a formula that someone else wrote. It, yes, it, especially if you have no idea about the columns, about your data. I always yeah. advise to my uh, audience, please study your data first, study your data structure, know their yeah. meanings uh, in in uh, in terms of the, the, their technical uh, properties, business wise. Know your data first before start writing a DAX formula. Yes, always. great advice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, are there any questions uh, from the audience by any chance? Uh, Christian is thanking you. Uh, thanks, Christian. Thank you. Uh, there is one thing, the length of the name. I didn't understand the question. Uh, 
uh, the length of the name. What was the time of the question? Now, currently. Ah, length of the name. Maybe, maybe they meant that the name of this uh, table is long. I don't know. That's my guess, and uh, I would Might probably be. agree. But then maybe they maybe they had a question, and maybe the question was: Is it okay to have long names? Is there a limit on the um, uh, length? of you know fields and stuff yeah we have and exactly that question now is it bad practice to to uh, have long major names hmm. okay so maybe it's not such a best, bad practice it's just that uh, you should realize that for example when uh, somebody builds a report or an end user um, tries to personalize a visual um, by default you will not see the full name and so it will be a bit difficult for people to read uh, the full names like I realized that you know, for example Kimball says that uh, you should write out the abbreviations unless uh, like everyone 100% knows what they mean like I don't know YTD is yesterday or whatever um, but the thing is if you write it in a long way then yes yeah, sometimes the name is cut off and then you have to <laughs> make it wider for example so just something for you to keep in mind that sometimes you cannot avoid it unfortunately mm -hmm. but it's okay yeah your naming convention should be coherent uh, in, in the model uh, yeah. we have another question what, what what is your thoughts about calculation groups and dax use of calculation um, groups in dax yeah i think that's a great invention I have used them a few times already and I think they make the code even simpler to write in some cases and the classic example now is things like time intelligence yes but then uh, you can also use them for other things for example uh, you can have a table that substitutes the current uh, measure um, and you know some people say that oh calculation groups don't do anything new you could do it with a switch statement before and that's not exactly right because calculation groups also handle dynamic format strings which i think is very very good because previously you had to use the same format now it can be dynamic and that's just great so i'm really glad that microsoft invented um, calculation groups in power bi uh, and analysis services in general so that's great i'm a big fan of them Great work, Microsoft. Okay, do, do, do you see any disadvantage of using them? Mm, well, sometimes uh, when you have multiple calculation groups and you apply them at the same time, you should be really careful of the precedence order because in some cases it matters quite a bit and you may get unexpected results. But then it's not really the fault of calculation groups it's just the way you, you write code you should keep in mind um, your expectations and the business logic first and foremost okay. other than that mm, not really okay thank you another question how, how do you cope with best practice in power query step names versus friendly names in ducks where, where do you <laughs> name your columns <laughs> um, okay um, yeah actually good question because um, I, yeah, I prefer see. Power Query site always for such yeah. things. Uh, Power Query site? What do you mean? I mean, I'm renaming my columns always uh, in the Power Query oh, yes. site. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, yeah, if uh, you are using a data source uh, that you have no control over, say, some files that somebody supplies to you, then of course you need to rename um, the columns in Power Query. Now, if you have a choice and uh, you can rename the columns, say in a SQL view, then I would say it's probably best to do it there. Um, because here's an example. Uh, let's say um, you connect to a SQL view and uh, you rename some columns, okay? But then let's say, uh, one column is uh, uh, renamed or removed or something and then your code uh, breaks 
so there is a way to avoid it. Actually, let me show you quickly. Um, you can do a, an optional parameter. No, actually, it's sort of going to work here. Mm. Let me show you. Uh, there is an optional parameter in Power Query uh, that, you can, that uh, you can employ. So let's say I rename AA into B. It's probably difficult to see, but um, yeah. Uh, so I rename it to B. Now let me go back and um, I'm going to just get rid of this step. Okay, so let me go back to the original query, let's call it this way, and let's call it C. Okay, and now it's broken because it it was it's not found right but i can add another another parameter here so if i use missing field ignore then it doesn't matter so if there is an error just just ignore it okay um, now if i just renamed my stuff in uh, say sql and not in power query then there would be no such error at least so as close to the source as possible that would be my answer yeah if you have a chance to edit the sql database if a better yes, solution. <laughs> yeah and that's a big if sometimes uh, yes uh, if you have some time some more time uh, then it is, is, is one of the audience is asking can we go through again to the example about single quantity and all colors measure In just a second. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Can can we explain it again? Why we are oh, seeing okay, okay. the same number in the all yep. color single sales column? Yep. Um, okay. So uh, let me return the uh, formula back. OK, so why is it like this, right? Even though we expect to see the same number for every field. And so you see all color sales, it removes filter from <coughs> color, right? So there is no color in this measure, right? no color. But when you filter a table like this, you filter the expanded table and that includes the related table. So the related table is product and color comes from product. So for example, in the first row where it's Azure, the color is Azure. So even though there is no color here, we filter by color here. So we say color is Azure. So you see no color, but then we put it back. And this is why the values are different because this filter is back. Now, if I get rid of it, this is not an expanded table anymore. It's just a column filter. And so we remove fil filter on color here, and then it still doesn't have any filter on color here. because It's just a quantity column. So it's a bit difficult, I understand, if you uh, read an article on expanded tables by SQL BI, uh, you will understand it. Uh, SQL BI has got an article on expanded tables. Okay, or drop operations is also another important point with such formulas. Mm -hmm. uh, another question. Uh, it's not a question, but a request. C can you recommend a comprehensive list of custom formats in DAX for future reference? If you mean maybe, custom maybe, formats, yeah, maybe it would be wanted blog post from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, uh, yeah, I'll consider it. I just use the documentation myself. Yeah, unfortunately, it's. Uh, I mean, the the custom format strings are not as mature. For example, um, you can't use the uh, quarter uh, format. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. But hopefully it gets better. 
and uh, we'll be able to get say quarter number from the date. Uh, that would be nice. But yeah, let me think of uh, the blog post and custom, custom format strings. Thank you. Another question. Sometimes I end up with lots of lots of measures I'm not using anymore. Do you have a good tip to see what measures are in use? Uh, yeah, there is a tool called Power BI Field Finder. Yeah, you can download it here. Steph Bruno developed it. Um, now, I cannot say it guarantees that, you know, it will tell you which measures are not used because as far as I'm aware, it doesn't consider 100% of metadata, but it, it will give you a good idea. So this is probably as good as it gets. Okay, this is a tool to find unused columns, right? Not, not, not the measures, I think. Well, fields in general, so columns fields and measures. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, there are several other good uh, external tools as well, like Power BI Helper. Oh yeah, uh, yes, 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 a very good point. Yes, sorry, I forgot about it. Yes, you're right. Okay, uh, I think we don't have questions. Uh, th thanks a lot, Daniel. It was a hell of a session. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. If there is one more question, I think. Okay, we don't have further questions. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Uh, I appreciate your time, uh, your sharing. Uh, you're sharing your no knowledge with us. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, all good. Thanks a lot, Khalil. I appreciate your invitation. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. The recording will be available next week on our YouTube channel. Have a nice day.